In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to decide if software development, and specifically iOS, is right for you, as well as share a few reasons why it might not be. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Dave and I make videos about iOS development and specifically how to break into the field as a new developer. Before I embarked on my journey into iOS development about a year and a half ago, I was working in a career where I wasn't entirely fulfilled or being challenged, which is what ultimately led me to uh, start looking into software development. And thankfully, it ended up being a perfect fit for me. And so I wanted to make a video sharing a few of my thoughts to ultimately help you decide if it's right for you. All right, so reasons why you might want to consider software development. Number one is if you're an analytically minded person. So much of software development is coming up with ways to accomplish something without a set list of instructions for how to do so. So if you really like optimizing or improving things, you're probably somebody who's gonna do well in software development. If you don't naturally think that way, this is a skill that you can actually build and develop over time, but it certainly helps if you consider yourself somebody who's good at creative problem solving and also gets enjoyment out of that. Number two is if you enjoy learning new things and aren't afraid of change. So software languages and technologies are things that are constantly changing. So you are going to fall behind if you're not continually learning. Whereas the flip side of that might be an industry where you can learn one thing and, and master it uh, in an industry that's not going to change all that much. So you can kind of just cruise without having to be learning new things constantly. And some people may want exactly that, whereas I personally would get super bored of that. And the third reason to consider software development is if tech culture in general is something that appeals to you. Some of the benefits of working as a developer or in tech are the opportunity to work on really exciting projects that have a meaningful impact to a really large amount of people. And you may not start working at the most exciting company because you just have to break in somewhere, but the longer you're a developer and the more you build up your skills, the more you're gonna be able to be selective in exactly what company you wanna work for or what project you wanna work on. Some of the other benefits include good pay, flexible dress, and of course it depends a lot on exactly the company that you're working for, but in general, a lot of developer jobs have pretty reasonable working hours and the potential for remote work. Next up is three reasons why you might wanna consider iOS development over other areas that you can get into as a software developer. And the first reason is simply if you really like using Apple products. For me, I've owned a Mac, an iPhone, an iPad, Apple TV, among other Apple products, and have really been a power user of the Apple ecosystem for, for years before getting into software development. And so it made it a lot of fun for me to start to explore the software side of things that's actually powering these devices. And the second reason is the Swift programming language and the community that's built behind it. So for those of you that don't know, Swift is the name of the programming language that Apple created years ago for developers to write software for its products. Compared to some of the other languages, Swift is definitely newer. And what Apple very intentionally did when they were creating it was make it so that it's more beginner friendly and more human readable. And this is a super nuanced topic that this video doesn't have time to dive fully into, but just know that if you're a complete beginner to programming, you're likely gonna have an easier time learning Swift than uh, a lot of the other languages that are out there. And the final reason to consider iOS is actually that it's a very narrow field of software development. And so it's not necessarily a better or worse thing, it's just a reality of iOS that you're really only creating software for Apple products. So if a company doesn't have an iOS app or a Mac app, then they really not, aren't gonna have a need for an iOS developer. But because it is so niche, once you're in, you're, you're kind of set in terms of job security and demand. And from what I've heard and even kind of experienced is that if you're shooting for an iOS developer job, it's typically going to take you longer uh, to get that first role. But once you do, the starting pay is generally higher than it would be if you went with web development. Moving on to reasons why you maybe shouldn't do software development. Now, real quick, I believe that anybody could become a software developer, but also that no single career option is just universally right for everyone. So with that said, reason number one is if you just want a quick and easy path to high income. While the income of a software developer may be more than what your current income is, uh, the reality is, is that the path to get there, it's not going to be quick and it's not going to be easy. 
I think boot camps can feed into this a little bit too much where maybe the perception of some people ends up becoming, oh, if I just you know do this program for three months, then I'll come out of it with a really high paying job because that's exactly what this one testimonial on the bootcamp website had told me. Now, while I'm not necessarily doubting the legitimacy of that one testimonial, what I'm saying is what really needs to be considered is for that one individual, how many other people were there that it took six to 12 months to find a job after the bootcamp or how many other people just gave up altogether because it was actually really difficult. It does take a while for most people to land their first job as a new developer these days. And that's because the market is really heavily favoring people with experience right now. And even with COVID, hiring has gone down a pretty significant amount. So I'm not, really not trying to discourage anybody from going into software development, but what I do wanna say is that you really should be expecting about six to 12 months of really intense work before you're gonna land your first job. And so if you don't have a serious passion for the actual craft of software development, you're probably gonna be a lot less likely to persevere through the different struggles that you're gonna face along the way. Now look, I'm not gonna say that income potential wasn't anywhere on my list of reasons to go into software development, but I will say that it wasn't higher on my list than actually having work that's meaningful and fulfilling to me. Reason number two is if you don't get any sort of enjoyment from solving problems or overcoming challenges. And that's because so much of what sustains you in this field long-term is that feeling of satisfaction that you get from solving a problem or, or fixing an issue or uh, finding a solution to something that you've never faced before. And I get that a lot of jobs have some element of problem solving, but for a software developer, it's really at the core of what you're doing every single day. So if that's not something that's really exciting to you, then software may not be the best fit. And my final reason not to get into iOS or software development in general is if software products themselves aren't something that's exciting for you as a user and with iOS specifically mobile apps. If you aren't the kind of person that if you have a specific problem that you look to software to find a solution for, or if you don't really have an appreciation for services that you use that maybe have a really nice user experience, then you probably aren't gonna have much passion as a software engineer who's building these sorts of products for other people to use. For myself, I'm a really heavy adopter of tech and so I get so much pleasure when I find a service or software that solves a specific pain point of mine. You know, I think of things like Trello or Feedly or OneNote, even things like the Chick-fil-A app and, and just knowing how much my life has benefited and improved from these different softwares, it, it becomes a really big driver for me to wanna to create an experience and a product that has a genuine benefit and impact on somebody else's life. All right, so those are my points for you guys to consider when trying to figure out if software development or if iOS is right for you. But before you actually go out and quit your job or go all in, the number one thing that you need to do to actually confirm if iOS is right for you is simply just try it. In today's world, if you want a Mac computer, there are so many great resources that are out there that you can try for free to get a taste for iOS development. And so ultimately, if you're unsure if iOS or if other types of software are right for you, just start small, maybe give it a couple hours a week and see how it goes. And finally, if you have no idea where to start, my next video is gonna share the exact resources that I would recommend for a complete beginner, as well as some of the things that you should probably stay away from. So if you wanna see that video, make sure to subscribe, or if you got any sort of value from watching this today, go ahead and hit the like button. It's an easy way to help the video get pushed out to a couple other people like yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.